Well, this was a pretty big week in the AI wars with OpenAI and Google's big events essentially locking horns on the battlefield. Which does, of course, lead to the question, who came out on top here? And I think that you probably have your knee-jerk reaction, as I did as well. But when you break everything down, I think the answer is actually going to surprise you. Let's dive in. First off, we do have an upgrade here in Studio B. Namely, I've got a standing desk here, and my back is super happy about that. Uh, we'll talk more about that and take a look at progress on Studio A in just a little bit. But for now, let's move on to the main event, Google versus OpenAI. So I'm not going to go into a major recap of the OpenAI Spring event. I already did a whole video on that. That is linked down below. I'm sure you are aware that the new 4.0 model came out, and you likely have access to it already. Google, on the other hand, had a very sprawling I.O. event. Um, yeah, I mean, watching this, I think that could be very much summarized as accurate if you watched the entire thing. But after parsing through the entire thing, there was definitely a lot of interesting and exciting things at Google I.O. and very much enough to justify this matchup. So let's start off with round one. The OpenAI event was pretty chill, hosted by Mir Marathi with some appearances by some OpenAI NPC red shirts. It ran about 45 minutes long and definitely checked off on the showmanship lesson of always leave them wanting more. Overall, I thought the presentation went really well. There was definitely a question of why is Mira hosting this versus Sam. Uh, that said, I think that this was a really great opportunity for Mira to get in front of the public eye after that more or less disastrous Wall Street Journal interview. Meanwhile, Google's I.O. event ran an hour and 52 minutes, and that was just the keynote part. I'm pretty sure that if you were to tally everything up, you could probably fit in one of the extended cuts of Lord of the Rings. Again, going back to this hilarious video, I will say having rewatched the Google I.O. event, there is a logical flow to the presentation. It just doesn't feel that way when you're watching it. I did think that Sundar did a great job on the opening. It's just that after he left the stage, it just really felt like this kind of endless parade of VPs and department heads. I mean, I think that is kind of an overall Google problem is that it just feels like this giant wall of faces and none of us have any connection to any of them. Uh, so yeah, overall, I would say on the presentation side, round one goes to OpenAI. Round two is a pretty big one. This is obviously the most one-to-one -one comparison of the AI voice assistant and multimodal capabilities. The OpenAI Spring events, I mean, basically it's bread and butter, was 4.0's conversational abilities, its emotional detection, and its vision capabilities, as well as uh, a number of other things. Google's response was Project Astra. And look, I think that had we not seen the OpenAI event a day beforehand, this probably would have gone over a lot better. But 4.0 did basically eat its lunch with its faster response time, lower latency, and ability to interrupt. And while I know that some people were a little annoyed with the kind of Valley Girl vocal fry stylings of the GPT model voice, that is something that you can change and can you know probably say like, look, Heather, let's dial this down a little bit. But the important thing to note here is that OpenAI's new model is truly multimodal. It's reading text, it is listening, and it is seeing whereas Project Astra is like three models kind of Frankenstein together, which while still very impressive, explains that lower latency as, as you're speaking to it, it sort of has to run through, translate things, go to another model and spit it back out again. I don't want to make it sound like I'm not impressed by Project Astra. It's just that obviously OpenAI does have the advantage here. So the point goes to OpenAI. Two rounds in, both of which have gone to OpenAI, but here comes Google with a right hook, namely Gemini Pro's 2 million token limit. 2 million tokens is no joke. You're talking about two hours of video, 22 hours of audio, and 1.4 million pages of text. That said, the 2 million token limit has not been released yet. It is actually, Gemini Pro is still at 1 million tokens, which look, that's still a lot. But that extra million is not set to release until later this year. And I, look, I know that Google has a reputation of announcing things and then having them vanish into the ether. That said, I do think that this is one that will stick. And while I do have to say that the old adage sticks here as well, it's not how many tokens you have, but how you use them. I will say that just that whopping 2 million you know, number, you, you basically, you gotta give this round to Google. So our fourth round is kind of an interesting one. This is a battleground that I am dubbing integration. It's not a direct comparison, but I think there's enough crossover here that we can basically call this a skirmish. So at the spring event, OpenAI showed off its new desktop app, which will allow you to work with ChatGPT away from the website uh, and even be able to do things like utilize its vision capabilities to screen share with it and, you know, 
interact with ChatGPT in real time on your desktop in an app that you're working on on your desktop. This feature has rolled out already, although it is Mac only, and you can't actually screen share with it. You're still you know, stuck to doing screenshots with it. Conversely, Google did show off Gemini's integration across the Google workspace. Examples included searching through your emails and creating expense reports via Google Sheets by scanning through for receipts in your Gmail, and a few others that were kind of impressive, but very oddly specific use case as opposed to like you can just do this magical thing now using AI across your Google workspace. It was a little weird and slightly sus. Still, I'm going to give the point to Google, namely because OpenAI doesn't really have anything in this kind of like suite of productivity. I am still very skeptical of Google products working together. Just earlier today, I fired up Gemini Pro. I asked it to create an event in my calendar uh, and then Literally, the next question was asking about that event, and it either didn't work or it didn't know. And then when I went to go check my calendar, there was no event. Still, given the potential of what this offers for Google, if it can get all of its apps talking and working together is pretty huge. Uh, I do definitely have to award this round to Google. Additionally, I think releasing the ChatGPT app only for Mac was a bit of a shot in the foot for OpenAI. So current standing is a tie, and I feel that this might be a good spot to check in with Studio A and to see what I looked like a few days ago before I got my hair cut. So as mentioned earlier, Studio B's latest upgrade is this very handsome standing desk. So yeah, I can do this all day long. And just for a quick FYI, let's go take a look at what's been happening over in Studio A. So my old flexi spot sanding desk has been taken over by the kids and they've turned it into like their little art station. If your house is infested with children, you know that the minute that you leave a space unoccupied, it's basically open territory to claim. In the meantime, work has been progressing along on the whole ceiling project. Uh, they were basically into wiring at this point. So yeah, basically it is, you know, half a construction zone with a little like oasis of an art station in the middle of it. So hopefully about another two weeks or so, but you know, it's funny moving into Studio B for the last two weeks, it really was only a couple of days before my back started absolutely killing me. And of course, it did not take long to realize, oh yeah, that's right, I am sitting all day again. So I reached out to our old friends at FlexiSpot and it happened to be some pretty good timing because they are in the middle of a pretty big promotion. At this point, I really do recommend a standing desk. This obviously is my second one from FlexiSpot and I think they're actually super great. Obviously you have motorized control and it does have presets so that you can set them for either standing or sitting. This also does have a USB port for charging. So that is super handy. You can also pick up a cable management tray, which I did install. I still actually need to do some work on that cable management. In terms of price, I will say that FlexiSpot is actually super reasonable. We'll talk more about that sale in just one minute. And they've been voted best standing desk by Tech Radar three years in a row. The desk is ready to hold up to 440 pounds. If you remember last time we did a flexi spot spot, we loaded it up with a bunch of weights. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because mostly because I don't wanna carry the weights upstairs, but uh, yes, this desk will hold the same amount. Assembly is fairly easy. I've actually now built two of them. You can either just use a Phillips head screwdriver and the included Allen wrenches, or if you've got some contractors leaving power tools around your house, you can use those. I think it's safe to assume that anyone who is watching this channel probably spends a fair amount of time sitting at their desk. And I don't think I need to tell you that obviously does take a toll. So if you've been considering a standing desk, I really do highly recommend checking out FlexiSpot. There is a reason that I reached out to them for this sponsorship. FlexiSpot do have their upcoming brand day sale where there will be a promo code linked down below for up to 60% off both desks and chairs. And you can use the promo code 24BDYTB50, which will be linked down below for an additional discount. My thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and my back thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's get back to the battlefield for round five. And this one is near and dear to my heart because this is an AI video generator released by Google called Vu. This is 100% their shot at Sora and they do win a couple of extra style points by having Donald Glover come out and tell us we are all now directors. It looks pretty good, but to my eye, you know, Sora still does take the cake. A few things to note, we are obviously looking at cherry picked examples, nothing against that, you know, in that initial run of Sora looks, those were also very heavily cherry picked. 
One thing that really stood out to me is the fact that there are no people in any of the examples in the view sequences, um, minus the one silhouetted cowboy. Other than that, you know, essentially they are all landscape or vehicle type shots. With that in mind, and the fact that I think that there still is just a lot more definition and clarity in the Sora outputs, I am going to give this round to OpenAI. That said, I am very interested to see what view holds. Uh, there is the wait list and you can sign up for it if you haven't already that's linked down below. Google also showed off Imagine 3, which looks great. I mean, it looks great. I have, I have no complaints about it. I think we've actually reached this sort of like post AI imagery era where they all look very good. I mean, you know, Dolly looks great. Uh, Mid Journey looks great. Leonardo looks great. Imagine looks great. It, they all, you type in a thing, you see the thing, you know, they all have sort of various styles that they do them in, you know, eh. I'm going to call this one a tie. For round seven, we move into music. And this is one where, I mean, honestly, Google ends up winning this by default as, you know, OpenAI doesn't have a comparable music generator. I have taken a look at Google Music previously. I think it's a pretty kind of, you know, fun, kind of cool little generator. It's not anywhere near the level of like Udio or Suno. It just generates you know, instrumental tracks, but you know, I think it does a pretty decent job. So it's definitely fun to play around with and is free. So uh, you can find it over at labs.google. Now, one of the things that I am interested in checking out when we get the new ChatGPT speech functionality is that we did hear some examples in the OpenAI Spring event of it singing. Uh, I am curious to see how far we can take that. Like, can I say, sing happy birthday in the key of G. In the meantime, round seven goes to Google. The next round automatically defaults over to Google as they announce their new TPU Trillium. Uh, you know, this falls under the hardware category and that's something that Google, you know, obviously is always going to beat OpenAI at. That said, on the hardware front, I was kind of surprised that we didn't see a new Pixel phone announced. Uh, it does look like they might be holding off on that for a later announcement. Conversely, I do think that the only way that OpenAI could have competed in this category is if Mira Marathi had a and one more thing moment at the end of the spring event and like literally Tim Cook walks out and announces that Siri is now ChatGPT. And while that is expected to happen in just a few months at WWDC, uh, it definitely does fall under the Apple banner more than it does the OpenAI banner. So once again, by default, uh, Google takes the hardware category, which brings us to round nine, where Google announced gems, which I still think is a pretty stupid name. Gems are, well, they're basically GPTs. They're, you know, small personalized assistants that you can train. This one was a little bit on the tough side to judge because once again, given like the wide array of products that fall under the Google Workspace suite, uh, these have the potential to be very powerful. Gems are basically personalized assistants that you can train. They're a little bit like GPTs in all honesty. The example that they showcased was having a gem uh, essentially create an itinerary for a family vacation by scanning through emails. Um, and then in, in typical kind of Google fashion to make things extra confusing, they also announced AI teammate, which is kind of like your work gem. And the thing is that I don't want to necessarily bag on either of these too hard because, you know, I think that they have the potential to be really powerful and productive tools. I just don't have a lot of faith that they're going to work. And we have no idea when they're actually going to be released minus, you know, sometime later this year. So this is that typical Google thing of, you know, throw a dart at a calendar and wherever it lands, maybe that's the release date. GPTs, on the other hand, are available right now and like anyone in the world can use them. Although I will say that I don't think that I've seen a killer GPT yet. The fact that OpenAI basically has leveled the playing field and is now allowing anyone in the world to you know, come up with their own GPT, I think we've got a pretty good chance of seeing what that might be. So I'm gonna give this round to OpenAI, mostly due to the global access of being able to use GPTs. And that brings us to round 10. And I'm pretty sure you did not expect it to be as close as this. In fact, I know you didn't expect it to be as close as this because in a community poll that I ran, you all expected this to be a bloodbath. But here we are at round 10 and we are at a dead tie. 
And that means I have to break it. And I can really think of no better way than to highlight uh, something that really clearly marked the differences between the two events. And that's mostly Google having the show opened with Mark Rebier. I mean, I got to give props to Google for getting weird on that one. Like Mark is a straight up musical genius. Do not get me wrong. And a YouTube legend, but uh, he is pretty niche. On top of everything, I mean, this is clearly the wrong crowd for him. And, you know, seriously, the cojones to go up and do a full improv set at like, you know, whatever, 10 in the morning in San Jose to a bunch of tech people. I mean, I don't know who I'm giving the point here to, but I'm pretty sure I'm giving the point to Mark. But I mean, someone at Google HQ had to have floated Mark's name. So, I mean, I presume that person no longer works at Google. In the meantime, let me know what your thoughts were on OpenAI's spring event versus Google I.O. down in the comments below. And once again, my thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. If you are in the market for a standing desk, uh, definitely go check them out in the next few days during their brand day sale. Uh, there's some pretty good deals. And again, solid desk. Links and coupon code listed down below. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.